Hey, how's it going? So, a number of you have reached out uh, with some questions regarding how best to pack for these international trips. So, I figured it might be nice to make a short form video. And then, um, if you have any questions, obviously reach out to me directly. Uh, one of the first things off the bat I'd recommend is get rid, of, get rid of any excess bulk you may have. So, anything that doesn't actually need to be in its box, I'd remove that. Uh, sometimes these accessories come with little packets in the back. I tear those off carefully because they can actually break the seal if you're not careful and you just rip them off. But do anything to kind of reduce the weight and reduce the bulk because, um, especially bulk because these things can get pretty, uh, pretty large and take up a lot of room and obviously uh, space, is, uh, space is as necessary as we can uh, prioritize here. So uh, that would be my first word of advice. Second thing is, uh, you know, make sure that you pack by case, not by type. And what I mean by that is I've seen people in the past have put like all the atrial leads in one box and all the ventricular leads in one box and all the devices in another. Uh, what happens though, unfortunately, is airlines tend to lose bags and they don't lose all of your bags all the time. Sometimes they lose one bag. But if all of your ventricular leads disappear, you're not going to be able to do any cases until we recover that bag. So uh, make sure that you uh, separate by case if possible. I know it can be complicated with some of the um, CPS, the, uh, the LV tools, the LV access tools, because they're quite long and bulky. But in general, I like to have a mix. So in this bag, I have pacemakers, uh, I have RV leads, I have RA leads, I have left bundle tools, same thing in this box. If this one disappears, we can still do uh, 10 cases, 20 cases at least, um, without worrying about, you know, when we get this one. Um, so it keeps us making sure we hit the ground rolling. Uh, obviously, advice is we ship things ahead of time or carry things in as early as possible so that when you're showing up the day of, you're carrying replenishment stock or just a little added stock that we could use for procedures um, and then there'll be stuff waiting for us for the next time, right? You never want to rely on what you're carrying because things um, can be held up at customs, things can be lost by the airlines and it puts you into a bad state. On that note, to avoid any problems with customs, I always recommend uh, having all of your paperwork in order. And then I like to print out copies of all my paperwork and leave a copy in each bag as well as carry with me. So in this packet, I have my deed of donation from the CVDF. I have the dossier of what is in both of these bags here, uh, as far as uh, like a spreadsheet, serial numbers for the leads and devices, um, as well as model link, all of that. And we can go over that separately. Um, same thing for all of our accessories. I have their lot number, their expiration date, um, obviously, some countries are very strict with expiration dates. You want to make sure that everything is not close to expired, uh, in dates, um, or reprocessed. Uh, you have all of your documentation in order. Um, I also have an export license or an export permission from the FDA. Um, and then because I'm going uh, to a specific country, I have the country's import license uh, information to show at customs, uh, as well as I send a copy of all of this to my folks on the ground, and they are going to print out more letters to send with me that I will print out and put in these packs right before I leave. I'm about a week and a half out. I usually have everything pretty much packed about a week or so out. Um, and then if I have to make changes, I make changes, but that way I'm not struggling and stressing to the last minute. So uh, another part of that is I like, I don't always do this, but sometimes I'm going to a country where I know it could be a little troublesome. I like to print out a copy of my visa. Uh, so a paper copy of the digital visa, if I don't already have one in my passport, so it's an e-visa, printing out a copy can be useful. Uh, just in case one of my phone dies and I don't have the ability to pull it up and then they have problems on their end pulling it up and I'm sitting there waiting, maybe I have to buy a second visa. Whatever it is, it brings attention to me, more likely to have to, um, you know, pay spot fines or have to uh, deal with customs that, that would otherwise just be a, a quick process. So um, get your visas ahead of time if you can, uh, unless it's a country that it's a very easy visa process, print them out possibly as well would be good advice. Um, same thing with uh, your hotel booking. It's nice to have a good copy of your hotel booking or at least um, you know have it memorized so that you can produce that because they're gonna ask you when you get to customs or when you get to, uh, to border control where you're planning on staying. Uh, I like to bring some uh, extra shoes. I usually just buy some of these Crocs when they're on sale on Amazon. If they're less than 20 bucks, I'll buy a pair. Uh, buy a larger size so it fits more people. Um, and then I also bring extra scrubs as well uh, that I plan on leaving behind. I do a nice thing and I wash them first because if you some of these new uh, fig scrubs will actually leave a blue, uh, blue marks in your body, I've found. So it's always good to, to pre-wash your stuff at a time because you don't know if you'll be able to wash it while you're there. Um, 
it's going to be a big red flag if you show up with an empty bag when you leave. So I'm not going to be able to do this in my case. Uh, but if you have uh, bags that can be uh, put inside of a larger bag or collapsible, even though collapsible is maybe not as good for protecting equipment, it's a lot easier to pass back out of the country. And then I can ask why you came in with empty bags and now all of a sudden you're, why you're leaving with empty suitcases. So just, a, just an idea for you. Um, always, uh, what I recommend is getting um, air tags. I put air tags in every single one of my bags and I mark them so that if they disappear, I'll be able to find them. There's not as many iPhones on the continent, but generally uh, it'll get flagged somewhere and you'll know when it gets lost in Europe and it's easier to track. And we've had specific instances where we've been told, oh, your device is not in the country. And we said, yeah, it is. Here's the terminal it's in. And they went and found it. So uh, don't trust airlines ability to track. Track it yourself, get an air tag, they're dirt cheap. I have a number of them and I keep them in all my bags when I go. Same thing, uh, luggage locks. I mean, if someone really wanted to get in, they would just rip this right off. But it's a nice way to just slow down, deter people from just going through your stuff if they don't, uh, don't need to. So I usually keep PSA approved luggage locks um, with all of my stuff. Uh, finally, if you are shipping lead, lead is a red flag. So just be aware that, um, you know, when you go through a scanner, lead's gonna show up and they're gonna search your bag. Um, so maybe be aware of what product you have packed with your lead. Uh, see ahead of time if they have lead waiting for you. You may not need to carry an additional bulk. Um, I actually have extra lead that I try to bring when I can, but it just depends. Um, and then just leave behind, obviously. Um, other than that, I like to bring a couple educational materials that I may have. Uh, so this is like programming guides, uh, I have a couple textbooks, things like that that's in line with what you're trying to do. Um, extra supplies, anything that you can have, just reach out if you have any questions um, and we can kind of advise you on what's best to bring. But that's just my general advice. Feel free to comment, message me, whatever we need to do. I appreciate all the work that everyone is doing to, uh, to bring product to these under-resourced programs. I know they appreciate it too. And there are many, many patients who, uh, who will benefit from your kindness. So thank you all very much. Uh, keep up the hard work and uh, I'll see you on the other side.